And all yours. All right. Hello, everyone, and a happy new year. So we are now resuming uh, normal activities for the uh, TSC. I hope you all enjoyed the break. Uh, to get started, we need to remind everybody of our antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed. This is to stay out of trouble. And then the code of conduct is also a key part of participating in these uh, meetings, which are otherwise public and uh, where we welcome anybody to join and contribute. We have a pretty full agenda today. Um, let's get going without any further ado. We first have an announcement. Rai, I believe you added this. Uh, sure. Um, it, it is what it says on the 10. Uh, we do have a weekly newsletter that goes out every Friday and uh, we are always looking for content. It's kind of difficult for uh, Jessica and uh, Dave Hughesby and me to go looking for like the cool important PRs or the or the cool changes in project state. So it would be really helpful if you want to publicize your projects to uh, help us out. Comment on the on the wiki page for the next week's uh, newsletter and just help us help you. So that's it. Yeah, the newsletter for next Friday is already up. Um, if you go on to Hyperledger on the wiki, there is a shortcut to the Dev Weekly Newsletter, and then you drop down to 2021, and you can they're um, named by the date that they are planned to be published. So yeah, if you want anything in next Fridays, just go to the 122 one and add comments as Rice said. Please, thank you. And I think there's a few yeah, more hours. I think there's a yeah, few the hours way, to get these are kind of That's the services. Oh, sorry, we keep talking. <laughs> Go ahead, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I, I was just going to say the the window, the the editorial window for the one that goes out today closes in a few hours. So if you have something you want to get in there today, or th for this week, it's still open. Anyway, Arno. No, all I wanted to say is the kind of services we have at our disposal and that we have, you know, that we benefit from that are more than what you would get if you were just on a GitHub, like one of the uh, many projects there. And it's kind of a shame that we're not using those to their full extent and that the staff who is providing those services has to struggle getting the content they need. So we all have here, you know, some responsibilities in the different projects it's a part of a responsibility to pass that message and keep an eye for things that can be relevant and that we should bring up to this channel. All right, with that done, uh, there are three quarterly reports that were posted. Um, I didn't see any call for action or questions for the TSC uh, than the usual you know, from Cactus specifically, I have in mind that, you know, they keep saying, hey, please, everybody come and help us. And for sure, you know, because they have this need to interact or to integrate with the different platforms, uh, they're in the need to have uh, the people involved in different platform to keep an eye and, and help them figure out whether they are taking the right approach or not. Um, I do want to highlight that we are missing what we have actually realized. I have to give right credit for that. We realized we have not been having any reports back from the uh, ARIES project. And so this was an oversight. Uh, it, will be, it will be fixed uh, in the coming months. We will get reports. It's interesting that nobody noticed uh, till now, but uh, in any case, it wasn't in the calendar, so that's why we didn't catch it. I also took the, the liberty of rescheduling a couple of the uh, reports to be in the same week. So Indian Aries and Grid and Transact, since those seem pretty closely aligned and our schedule is pretty full. And with holidays, it makes it very hard to work around. So I'm just trying to make this easier for the, for the projects. If you have feedback, please let me know. So is there any questions that has not been asked on the wiki on any of these projects or anything anybody wants to bring up now? Now is the time. 
Okay, if not, then I suggest we move on without uh, wasting any time. So the main part of the uh, agenda for today is a presentation from the Cactus Project. And uh, <clears throat> we will then have a couple of discussion items that I hope we can cover. So let's try not to spend the whole rest of the hour on this. But uh, the idea is, again, you know, we are getting this series of presentations from working groups and projects and eventually SIGs as well. And so it allows us to have a bit more of insights, a deeper insight into what's going on in the projects. So with that being said, the floor is yours. I don't know who is going to talk specifically or uh, who starts. Uh, the, thank you for yes. the, uh, the introducing. Uh, the, my name is Shingo Fujimoto. So the, I will be a volunteer for the presentation for the, uh, the, our project to introduction today. So the, uh, the other contribu core contributors are also online. So the, uh, the I'd like to uh, keep the short for the, my presentation in five minutes. And I'd like to encourage to the, uh, the giving the feedback and question to the, from the TSC members. Can I start the presentation now? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, the thanks for the giving that the, as uh, this uh, precious uh, opportunity. So the as the announcement mentioned, to the uh, the our project uh, hyperage cactus is uh, the uh, the first half year was passed. So the, this is a good opportunity to report and share the uh, current status with uh, hyperage communities wide. And I'd like to ask to the uh, the further feedback and collaboration of, uh, from the uh, group, from the different projects. So the, that was uh, in our intentions. So the, as you may know, the uh, the cactus is uh, located in the one of the two uh, of two project, uh, which helps to the uh, the the use of the different platforms like a basu borrowed and fabric in these Irofa sotus. Uh, now the different uh, the razor technologies in the, uh, the even in the hyper razor communities. So the uh, the unfortunate things in the blockchain market is uh, we currently have uh, some sort of the fragmentation among the industries. But uh, as a nature of the, uh, the industry, we better to interwork with uh, several uh, the different uh, the markets, and uh, that might be uh, have the uh, the good uh, the solution could be uh, uh, the generated if we could remove to the such a barriers between the industries. So the uh, the 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 main issue. Uh, on the the such a uh, interworking is uh, uh, the when we think about the uh, the integrate to the multiple uh, regions, uh, the we need to uh, we cannot avoid to the issue for the the trust on the trade uh, the on the digital asset, which usually uh, the manage on the different regional technologies. So there's a beginning of the project. We uh, clarified. Uh, we are started from the clarifying to the uh, principles for the, uh, the to remove the, to solve the problem on the interoperabilities. So the we also uh, the figure out to the which features are really uh, need to be provided as a, uh, the the two or uh, the parts of the libraries. Uh, the, this is a kind of uh, the big uh, the information for the, uh, the today. Uh, the, we uh, the, the at the beginning of the cactus, we have a very high level architecture was uh, the, the proposed, but the uh, the when the, after the six months later, uh, the, we are providing to the code and figured out to the uh, the what is minimum and what is a common and this, that kind of the discussion was uh, internally made with uh, not only the Fujitsu and Accenture and uh, uh, the another con the, as a result of the discussion, we devised to the diagram of the architecture to fit to the multiple uh, the, the needs from the market. 
So the mainly uh, that we need to uh, do thinking about is uh, the regional plugins. That is a mechanism to absorb to the difference of the other uh, regions. So the other uh, those regional plugin will be uh, accessed from the common common parts. That is uh, in scope of the uh, the 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 cactus. So the uh, the cactus application for the we call we name to the those are the business logic plugin will be uh, provided from the each vendors or in developers, and the, that can be accessed to the uh, the all the different regions in the, uh, the that was implemented in differently, but uh, that could be uh, easier to be integrated. So the, uh, the, the, at the end of the last year, uh, the, we published the, uh, the interim release, which uh, the tag name is version 0 0.3. Uh, the, that is consists with the uh, regular plugins, like a uh, fabric version one, uh, that is kind of legacy now, but uh, uh, the, that is a practical to know the, uh, to control. And Besu and Goethalium and Quorum is, uh, even though those are same using to the uh, the same network, but the different implementation. So is that gonna be the good exercise to uh, figure out to the what is the common and what is uh, uh, could be differentiated. So that we also provided to the example application in two different use cases, like a car trade and supply chain management. And uh, for example, the uh, the car trade is a kind of well the example to using to the existing solution how we can integrate to the existing solution can be the uh, the the other integrated service. So the car trade is actually the example application for the hyperledger fabric, and that is uh, uh, the transferring to the ownership of the car from the one to the others. However, in this uh, the particular use cases, uh, example application, uh, that we can uh, upgrade to the that example without uh, the changing to the result calls. So the the cactus will be uh, arguing to the uh, the the actually paying to the uh, the transferring to the such a money uh, ownership between the users. And. Uh, I, and also the we are uh, the other short time goal uh, that we are thinking about to the removing to the dependency on the other uh, languages and the, the implementations. So the, uh, the the now that we are thinking about to the using to the different uh, languages and different interface and the different solutions. Those are designed for the program programmable uh, designs. So the, uh, the, the, this diagram is showing to the, uh, the, the proposal at this moment, but uh, uh, the, the, we choose to the, uh, the type split as a primary languages, but uh, for the Leisure plugin can be implemented in different languages. So this is also another inter, uh, the example for the plugin mechanism, which is not the main feature, but uh, for the case of the we are uh, the thinking about the uh, the some commonality, but uh, that might be a different way to uh, implementations. In that case we define to the interface, and we are going to the different way to implement it to choose it. So the uh, the then the, the we can be uh, using to the those uh, the plugins through the other uh, common interface uh, without uh, uh, awareing to the uh, the different implementation under uh, provided. So there's a uh, uh, the end of the uh, the well, presentation. Uh, the the intention was uh, we are actually uh, the provided to the the interview release for the evaluation, but uh, we are uh, still the have the wrap of the other uh, resource for the developing enough. So the, for the case of the uh, the developing to the regional plugin, uh, uh, we um, we are planning, uh, but still that is not uh, uh, the enabled for the fabric version two and colder. So those both are the very. Uh, the the community and the people are uh, really wanted. 
And we also need to do some sort of the very complicated uh, mechanism like uh, uh, the hash the time lock mechanism, uh, mechanism like uh, the, the, because of the HTLC is usually implemented to other, uh, the, the single application, but uh, I think to the we better to extend it to version of the cross ratio uh, atomic swap could be uh, possible in the other extension from the uh, practice. And uh, the I the I uh, no the we uh, the the core contributor hearing to the uh, the strong wish from the community to provide to the common high level transaction protocol on the cactus. So the, we are still the discussing to the uh, how to manage it. Is that should be in scope of the cactus or not, or other uh, the. the the platform dependent, uh, leave it as a platform dependent. So anyway, the, we are uh, providing to the those uh, the activity on the, uh, the wiki page and asking to the, uh, the more people in come to and, and contribute it. So we also uh, provided to the white paper in the, uh, the active state. So the, uh, the all the agreements and the, uh, the, the current status and the APIs are described in the white paper. So the, that's all for now. And I'd like to hear the, your uh, comment, question and comments. Thank you very much. All right, can I jump in before we get to the questions? I just also wanted to highlight again that slide with the language agnostic plugin development. So that's uh, something that uh, I alluded to back the last year in my, uh, or our global forum presentation. And now we made it reality. Uh, so I really wanted to make sure that I underlined that now we have the ability to talk to any other plugins written in any other language. And uh, we believe this is a big step towards unlocking a lot more people from being able to come and contribute. And that's why I also wanted to make this pitch, which is my second thing I wanted to underline. Let's get there faster together, meaning if anybody would like to come and join us, help uh, with these specific topics as well, as others, then uh, please feel free to talk to me. We are especially interested in, like the slide said it, uh, fabric and corda connector contributions, also feedbacks from the other, or about the other connectors. And uh, and yeah, the, the atomic swaps, that we don't have anything on that yet, but we would love to have to. And I feel like this is the right time to make a stronger push for asking people to take a look again, because now we have an actual working example with end-to-end -end tests passing in the CI where there's a plugin written in Rust, which uh, is just a language I picked randomly. And uh, it actually is able to use the same existing API definitions on the Node.js side to communicate with the Rust code. And uh, it all just works. So that's uh, that's my pitch at the end, just an extension to underline everything that Shingo already said. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. All right, thank you, guys. So is there any questions for Shingo and Peter? Otherwise, I have one to get started. I mean, you know, in the first place you say, okay, one of the goals is not to have a middle main that you need to trust. And, and then you showed us this slide where exactly that one, where, oh, come back. It was the one that I was looking for or thinking about. Yes, this one. And there you show us cactus as if this is exactly the middle man. So can you explain a little bit what's behind this box? Because I'd actually know that it's not quite a middleman. And so I think it'd be interesting to highlight why it is not such. 
Yeah, the I think that the uh, the the because of the we are focused on the providing to the multiple region pagoins in very first stage, but uh, uh, the we also provided two example now. So uh, that was named to the cut rate and supply chain management, and that is a kind of uh, the at this moment that is a kind of very uh the skeleton uh the application which uh execute to the uh the the transaction line by line with conditions so the for the case of the cut rate uh the we are stepping to the uh the to uh the that application uh had the ability to uh getting to the event from the Russia province uh, the, that is uh, targeted to uh, register is uh, uh, the fabric uh, network. And also the, that had uh, uh, the, the, that application also using to the cactus ability to making the inquiry about the, uh, the balance of the account on the Ethereum networks. And uh, uh, the, that is uh, determined to the uh, the the card rate it could be possible with uh, the current balance, and then the that application also execute to the uh, the transferring to the money as a escrow services, and uh, uh, the when the the transferring to the the such a uh, the the token uh, transfer. Uh, then the uh, the cactus also execute to the uh, the another transaction on the high fabric uh, regions to transfer the ownership uh, the one to the others. So the, that was uh, uh, the kind of step of the uh, the examples. The supply chain management is uh, similar. So the uh, the the if you are interested in the such a logics. Uh, that we already have the example application on the GitHub, so the, uh, the you can be uh, see the what we are doing in the such, such a black box. Is that answering your question, Anna? All right. Yes. Thank you. That helps clarify a bit. Anybody else? Hello, this, this is Angelo. Um, so the, thanks for the presentation. And but um, I, I have to admit that uh, I, I still I cannot really wrap my mind around that it's my limit uh, around this uh, uh, this project because uh, during the presentation you talk uh, a lot about uh, uh, engineering aspect. But I must admit, if I had if if I want to use tomorrow cactus or let's suppose when it becomes even more stable, I don't really understand which are the guarantees of this architecture. What happens if there is a fault in one of the networks? How do you build trust among different, uh, uh, among different networks? Which are the, even the, the semantics that this plugin or which the contracts that this plugin has to satisfy in order, for example, to get an atomic swap or an atomic uh, uh, transaction that spans multiple uh, multiple network. So may maybe this, the this theory is there, and I'm, I'm missing it. Uh, and if it's if it's uh, if it's there, please send me the links. Uh, I'm, I would be really curious. Or if you have papers published at conference, I would be very very interested in reading that because I the the problem is very hard. I don't understand how, how if you manage to solve it so easily. I would say this is astonishing that. I think that uh, well, the, that is a very good point for the uh, the how we can solve the, such a uh, very complicated problem. So the as a beginning of the our discussion with uh, uh, the some graduate student as a volunteer, uh, that we are starting to the writing to the academic paper for the that one. And the, uh, the very brief uh, the clarification we also provided to the uh, typical use cases like uh, uh, the such a uh, the atomic swap like uh, the trading. However, the, uh, the at this moment we providing to the solution for the to abstraction on the this level like uh, uh, the how we can uh, the absorb to the uh, the difference uh, on the the different uh, the different type of the format and the steps 
For example, uh, Ethereum only required to the single transaction. However, the fabric cases, we need to the two phase, uh, the uh, commit <laughs> like uh, the operation is needed. So there's so such a difference will be uh, uh, the, the actually need to be interrupted or realized by the, uh, the business logics. Uh, however, the, uh, the, 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 because of the, 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 uh, the cactus mechanism providing to the, some sort of the, uh, the common functionality to uh, absorb to the, such a difference in the, uh, the certain level. Uh, the, the, uh, the, because of the, all the blockchain has a very similar mechanism like uh, uh, the JSON based uh, data formats. And we also need to the some sort of the trust point uh, the, for um, among, uh, among the, uh, the participated uh, the network. So the, for example, Ethereum has a, a, the, the group uh, the, who agree on the, uh, the security of the, uh, the digital asset token uh, like uh, mechanism. And the, on the other hand, for the, our cases, uh, the card rate make, the ledger has a different mechanism or uh, the, well, the, and also the policy to manage that, that ledgers. So there's those ledger, uh, the difference will be uh, the realized by the validator uh, the, as a uh, the point of the trust. And that uh, the signature on the, uh, sorry, uh, the signature on the each transactions. So the, uh, the, that signature will be uh, evaluated by the verifier using to the common uh, mechanism. And the, the, as a result, application can uh, handle the, uh, the, the event uh, without seeing to the actual uh, the implementation of the blockchains that can be uh, react on the, such an event given from the, uh, the underlying uh, the network like uh, Ethereum, uh, the fabric and so on. So the, uh, the, I hope that that is uh, uh, the help to uh, 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 the answering to your questions. Um, I also want to point I guess, out- I guess if I can say maybe a recommendation, I would, I would really recommend you to accelerate as much as possible on, on the, the, the paper, because this will give also more confidence in this, in this project, in, this, in such, an, in a such complex endeavor. So I, I, I'm really, I found, I found the goal very, very important, very important. These things of uh, putting um, a unif or um, having a common ground of, of, among all these different systems. But because the task is so difficult, in order to make, to, to attract people to say, oh, if tomorrow uh, Fujitsu wants to use Cactus, will he use it? Will he, will he build trust? Will he, will, he, will he say, oh yeah, Cactus really works. Uh, we, this achieves what we, what we want, it gives, uh, the security guarantees, the completeness guarantees, and all these guarantees that we need for our system. So, I, I really encourage you to to go to a to, to a conference as soon as possible because then you have peer reviews and you can be more confident on what you are doing. Yeah, we are already started to the uh, the activities. Thanks for the uh, the such a device. So the I think that is a kind of parallel work with uh, uh, the with collaboration with uh, outside of the uh, the high pressure. However, the, this is an open community, so the, uh, the we are solving such a problem uh, the, as soon as possible. So, Angelo, I want to add that this is ongoing. Um, you know. As I said in chat, we're working on a full academic paper with the UC-inspired security model. Um, we'd be more than happy to send you the paper once it's in a, a readable state. Um, and we'd actually, you know, love for any kind of, uh, you know, love your comments if you're interested. Um, with pleasure, with pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if, you're, if you're really interested, um, we frequently talk about the paper in the uh, Cactus Western uh, Hemisphere meetings, which are usually every Thursday, every other Thursday, right after the TSC meeting. So not this Thursday, but next Thursday. Um, we frequently talk about uh, 
the, the cactus paper and what we want to do and, and things like security models. Um, so you or anyone else who's, who's welcome to join, you know, everyone's welcome to join. Yeah, so, basically, or, the, uh, basically the, uh, the Japan has a uh, uh, difficulty on the participation, but the, uh, the we are exchanging to the communication on the main basis sometimes. So the, uh, the and uh, I, if I can be at something like uh, the, the contributors meeting also having a touch of the such a, a critical issues sometimes uh, in the topic. Yeah, but, but you're exactly right. There's a lot of stuff to do. Even once we get done with the basic model, it becomes a question of how do we handle sort of privacy preserving mechanisms or integration between privacy preserving blockchains. And that gets very, very complicated in a hurry. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that answered your questions and uh, we will definitely send you the paper uh, once it's in a, a draft state that's good enough to read. Sure, thanks so much and keep going. All right, thank you. I mean, I think this is the kind of discussions we want to enable with those presentations and, you know, that's great. Arun has a question. Yes, so I have, I was asking a few questions and thanks hard for answering those questions on the chat. Um, so that makes me, I mean, your last answer makes me more curious to understand how is the trust anchored from these individual siloed blockchain networks through to the integration layer? What I mean by that is, is there any um, implementation expected or any changes expected from it, from the underlying blockchain networks? And where does it lie? Is it is it at the um, core protocol layer or is it at the application layer? So yeah, the, 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 I believe to the the your question is regarding to the consortium management mechanism here. Uh, the 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 we had a choice of the uh, the the how we can manage to the set of the uh, the ledger can be trusted. So the uh, the we provided to the very simple minimum version of the uh, the consortium management mechanism, like uh, uh, the simply the single manager adding and uh, the exposed to the those uh, the ledger can be uh, trustworthy. And other cases, uh, the, it might be the, uh, the, the, this mechanism also asking to the, uh, the endos to the, uh, the, the, which, uh, the, uh, the DLT technology, uh, uh, the, sorry, the blockchain network can be trust uh, the, as a part of the Cactus applications. So because of those applications will be uh, the, the, uh, the spread out to the internet as uh, the integrated services. So the, uh, the each service may choose to the different policy of the management of the consortium. So the, I think, I hope that that is answering to your questions. Well, at least I hope this is a good start of an answer. I mean, obviously we can't hope to answer every single question in depth on this call. That's not really the point, but hopefully it has given people a bit more insight as to what's going on, where the project is heading to, and then give an appetite to maybe find out more, which can be done offline through many different channels, including getting involved in the project itself. So, and this, anybody has a burning question, I suggest we leave it at this so we can move on and address the other items we have in the agenda. Yeah. Thanks Sorry. for the give us the opportunity. And uh, as you know, the, this is a very uh, the early stage of the, uh, the, the project. So the, we hope to the deliver the, the, the first release as a whole solution as soon as possible, but uh, uh, the, we also want to, to encourage to the, all the people to come to us and uh, give us a feedback. That is our hope. Thank you very much. Well, thank you to you for sticking with us and uh, giving that presentation, answering questions. Thank you. So with that done, I would like us to move uh, with the agenda. We have two discussion items on the agenda. Let's start with the first one. This is a follow-up to Tracy's post on the mailing list. She had the first meeting with the SIG people and uh, you know, she, she sent a, quite an extensive report in email and I thought it would be a good idea to spend a bit of time today 
to hear from her. For those who may have not seen their email, shame on you. <laughs> no, but uh, and uh, and and maybe start discussing what we can do because I think what that's really interesting that there's all, clearly some items we should take on and discuss so that you know we can improve the situation. So Tracy, floor is yours. Thanks, Arnold. Um, so yeah, I'm just I brought up on the share screen the actual email that I sent out. Um, had a really good discussion with a number of the SIG chairs this past, uh, I think it was this past Monday or, or maybe it was the Monday before. Um, and these were the notes that um, that we kind of took, David and I kind of took out of uh, the meeting that we had. So there were a number of items that were brought up um, ranging uh, a wide range of different topics. Um, some of these topics I think we have talked about before. Um, some of them are, are new topics for us to think about. And, um, you know, I think we can take each one of these and, and really kind of dig into them. Um, some of them are obviously a lot easier to address than others. Um, some of them, um, you know, are probably as simple as trying to set up some sort of uh, schedule whereby we want to do presentations from projects or working groups or SIGs, similar to the one that we had today from Cactus and the one that we had previously from Bobby, um, where whereby we could have people sign up, um, you know, if we want to do this once a month um, in one of our meetings or, or whatever that cadence looks like. And I think that's just a decision that we have to make as a TSC as far as, you know, what it looks like. Um, and then there's some other ones that I think have been um, hounding us for quite some time, like item number two, right? And um, really the understanding of how um, hyperledger projects work and, and kind of the different use cases that might apply, um, the, the sorts of things that uh, could come out of, um, you know, maybe some best practices that people have had. I know that came up a lot in the uh, member summit this past year and I think it's come up in the member summit pretty much every year that I've attended the member summit um so again has been a, an item out there I think that we've yet to address in a way that seems to satisfy all um and, and so you know basically the I, I don't think we can accomplish this um necessarily on a call right I think this is going to have to take some maybe some um, task forces to, to go out and actually do some work. Um, but these are the, 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 the six different items that, that came out of that call. All right, thank you, Tracy. Uh, I agree with you that, I mean, clearly some items seem easier to, to you know, address than others. But, and I saw Arun already responded to your email and also, you know, made some proposal. Um, so is there any reactions? Yeah, thank you. Any comments from anyone? Silence. You can use the raise your hand feature to get on the queue if there is any queue. If nobody is talking, obviously you can just speak up, but yeah, so since I'm sure I can't see if anybody's raising their hand, but maybe I'll just um, pile on to what I've already said, um, because I think there's a couple of these that um, are probably really good pieces for people in the TSC themselves to, to get involved in. Um, one is kind of mentorship. Um, you know, we've talked about mentorship in many different ways and forms, but I, I do think that the SIGs could use somebody um, who is potentially a member of the TSC to at least uh, be some sort of official mentor, right? Um, somebody who uh, would be there to, to answer questions, maybe help direct them as far as how they get involved in the technical community and asking for help. Um, you know, uh, sometimes, unfortunately, um, from what I've discovered uh, in this conversation, um, it takes a recognized voice for people to get responses back, um, which is an unfortunate sort of uh, situation. Um, but um, I do think that we are obviously all STSC members, recognized voices in the community that could potentially help. Um, 
you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, the other piece that is an interesting one is rolling up different sorts of contribution opportunities um, across the SIGs. But I think then we could also extend that to, um, for example, the three contribution opportunities that were just suggested by Cactus, right? And how do we roll up all of those contribution opportunities so that people can, you know, go to one place and look and see um, what might be of interest for them to to focus on and work on, and then also, you know, kind of an entry point into who should they go talk to, right? Yeah, maybe a, an initial contact person who would uh, help them with that initial contribution, which again lends itself to, to mentoring, right? Um, when I first started with Hyperledger, uh, Nick Gasky uh, helped me through the process of uh, working through a PR and, and bringing that into Garrett, which I've never used before. Um, and if it wasn't for Nick, right, I'm not sure that I would have made it through that process successfully. Um, so I, I think, you know, these are the sorts of things that I think about, right, as far as my journey in the Hyperledger community and the sorts of people who have helped me um, to, to be part of this community. All right. Thanks again, Tracy. I, I, you know, on the mentorship, I'm worried that if we have just somebody I, it seems to me that the SIG should have a mechanism to ask for specific expertise and we should be able to, you know, figure out who might, you know, might be the relevant person or at least the kind of person. Because, you know, like the example you have is on how to create a wallet in Aries. I would think, you know, not everybody is going to be able to mm -hmm. answer those questions. They, they, so what I'm trying to get to is I think maybe we need some mechanism for them to be able to get the expertise they need, which is a bit different from having some kind of general mentor who could just be there, but may not be able to answer the questions anyway. Arno, this yeah. is David. I can just add to what Tracy had said. I, I think in many cases, a mentor doesn't necessarily have to have the technical knowledge. It's more just being an entry point into the community. As Tracy kind of referred to, I've seen examples of uh, members from SIGs ask questions in chat on the list, reaching out to some maintainers and just not hearing back just because they're not a name that's been recognized, right? And so I, I, I think maybe a mentor in this case would just be more of an entry point into, into maybe some different conversations in other places and just maybe facilitating inter introductions would be more valuable in that case than having the specific technical answer to a technical question. Um, and then to add to what Tracy said, I also was really, really uh, interested in the idea that came from this discussion that Tracy was having with the SIG chairs about rolling up all the different contribution opportunities. You know, I think we do have situations where different projects are making information about contribution opportunities available. But if you add up all the projects, all the labs, all the SIGs, all the working groups, I mean, that could be 40, 50 different places where somebody would need to go to get a sense of all the different uh, you know, opportunities. I personally would be really, really interested in having you know, uh, you know, some sort of a task force that looked at how do we roll all those up so we can have one page on the website one page, or, or, or on the wiki where you can go and kind of get that holistic view. That seems very mm -hmm. valuable. All right. I, I would think maybe also we should offer this to the SIGs to you know, reach out to the TSC when they are in search of of any kind of expertise and the TSC in general may be a vehicle to find the right experts so that they would be able to engage. At least that seems like, you know, it's the low hanging fruit that we should be able to, to, to enable. Uh, on, the, uh, on the lab process, I have to say I'm a bit interested. I'm a lab steward. <laughs> I've been involved in the lab from the beginning and uh, you know, I saw Arun suggested maybe Deepin could uh, join us one day and tell us more about this. I am I'm, I'm truly puzzled by the this this whole thing about the labs being kind of disconnected and the process being difficult. I you know, and of course I have I am biased here because I I have a lot of knowledge about how labs are functioning and. It seems easy to me, and I'm, I'm interested to hear what the challenges are. So I just put it that way. Yeah, so Arno, I've had some follow-up. Um, David has connected me with, with one of the folks who had some challenges. And um, 
you know, we, we've talked about a few things um, and I'm happy to, you know, forward that email uh, to the lab stewards uh, because I think there's, there was some good suggestions that came out of just minor things that we could do to make things easier, putting things in different places um, so that it's more visible and, and um, people know kind of what they're getting into when they're signing up for a lab. So um, I, I agreed, right? I was where you were like, what, what's happening here? Um, but, uh, but there are some really good suggestions. So I'll, I'll make sure to include the map stewards on that. All right, sounds good, thank you. Any other questions? Otherwise, I suggest we move on. I, you know, I think we should follow up on those items individually uh, on the mailing list, and then we can take them up uh, back on, you know, separately on the on these calls to see, you know, practically speaking, what resolutions we can make and to make progress. Arno, would it help to start a you. separate? Would it help to start a separate email yes. chain on each of these six items and then we can you know comment specifically on those? That's probably a good idea because I think otherwise it's gonna be intertwined different yeah. Uh, yeah. answers to different items. Okay. But I'll do thank that. you for following up and uh, executing on your action. Not that I'm surprised, but <laughs> <laughs> all right. We have one more agenda item. Um who is going to talk to this? Brian? Daniela? Uh, it's, sorry, uh, about the uh, uh, maintainer summit? Yeah, the maintainer summit. Yep, okay, great. Uh, so we thought it's it's uh, past time and, and well due for us to try to do a virtual version of a maintainer summit that we last did successfully, I believe it was 2019. Um, forget which month it was uh, there. And for the focus to be, you know, kind of a smaller gathering of the, the uh, technical teams on, on each of the software projects at Hyperledger uh, and really focusing on, um, you know, not just, you know, re regular presentations of here's what Cactus does, that sort of thing, but really the opportunities for projects to work more closely together, uh, as well as trying to understand, you know, just what, what does it mean to be a maintainer at Hyperledger? How might we drive um, more convergence around things like the the directory hierarchy structure that we agreed to last year and and some other kind of you know, CI, CD, other, other types of cross project, think of it as, as standards, uh, if you will, for how, how the projects are run. Um, uh, but, but also to do some social uh, uh, kind of uh, building as well. You know, the, the last maintainer summit uh, was, uh, I wasn't there, but, but I heard it was a, a really good opportunity for people to kind of get past a bit of the, the tribalism we have sometimes and get to know each other. That's obviously harder to do in a virtual setting. Um, but we feel like there's still uh, some things that, that are, are possible to do in that front to help us get to know each other as, as individuals. Um, uh, it's, it's smaller. It was last time it was capacity limited only because, you know, we didn't have a large space and, and people traveling physically means you have certain infrastructure requirements. We don't have that this time, uh, but we'd like to, to make it still feel like a, a must attend kind of thing and a, and a high quality experience for folks. So thinking about just predominantly making sure that maintainers on the projects know that uh, this is an important thing for them to attend, but it's still being open to anyone else from the TSC who doesn't happen to be a maintainer uh, or others who show up on calls like this or otherwise kind of pretty <coughs> core committed. Um, but but trying to just really focus it on on the the, the, the meat of, of how we develop software here. So we're currently thinking that March would be a good time for that, uh, wedging it in between other things, giving people time to be able to put on their calendars, thinking that, you know, it'd be predominantly a virtual event, you know, hosted over something like Zoom, maybe a, a couple of different tracks or breakouts, but but trying to keep things focused and tight. Um, and in terms of timing being something on the order of three or four hours uh, a day for two or three days. Um, again, I, you know, I, it's hard to find a time that works for everybody globally. Um, uh, but probably something, you know, like around the, this time, you know, you know, early Pacific, late in the evenings, uh, Asia time, uh, and otherwise pretty accessible for, for others. Um, 
<laughs> so wanted to put that on the table. Uh, uh, if you have ideas on this, uh, please get in touch with with us, either direct email to me or Rai uh, or or David Boswell, um, uh, who are just kind of on the on the staff side, going to try to organize the, the putting together of this. Um, and and we'll we'll try to put this in an email to the TSC as well. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, with that, um, I don't know if there's anything else, uh, David or Rai or Arno, you think is worth adding. Oh, I think that's good. Thank you. I mean, obviously, the fact that it's virtual is never going to be as good as having a face to face meeting. And, you know, we'll sure don't have a beer together at the end of the day. But uh, I think I agree that, you know, it would be good to get the community together. And uh, hopefully this is better than nothing and can help, you know, get everybody in the same on the same page. Last time the community got together, the uh, the the social event was an axe throwing uh, uh, kind of evening. Um, I, I guess beer was involved there too. It seems like a bad combination. Everyone survived, as I understand it. Um, uh, if there's yes. a virtual version of something like that, we can do to blow off some steam. Um, certainly worth uh, considering. Uh, as a, as it, a it was it was truly excellent, Brian. Okay. Beer and axes <laughs> was awesome. So is there any reactions, comments? I mean, are, do people think this would be useful? Uh, you know, is that a waste of your time? Because, you know, we don't want to waste anybody's time, including the staff in preparing this, setting it all set, getting it all set up. If we don't have a fairly large number of maintainers committed to participating. And, you know, also related to that is you know, what are the kind of topics that you guys think would be useful and would be appealing to people, you know, make them want to participate, not just because they were told so, but because they feel like this is something, you know, they will gain from this. So I have to say the, you know, the, when we had the last uh, maintainer summit, which, we had after a long break as well, by the way, um, we, we had a mix of meetings that were like general, uh, everybody in the same room talking about general topics. We talked about some issues that were related to, you know, how the different projects operate are organized, things like, you know, the, the common repository structures were discussed, things that are pertaining to all the projects and I suspect we could have these kind of discussions for sure. Then we had also breakout session, which was easy because we had a pretty large facility that allowed for different breakouts. That's much harder to enable in a virtual setup and with very you know short, I mean, time constraints um, you know, are such that it's harder to do this. And so I don't know if that's possible, but it allowed uh, both some proud people to catch up on what was going on in other projects, as well as some coordination between uh, different projects. And, and even among certain projects, they were you know, taking advantage of being together at the same time. That probably is not as needed because typically all projects have their own kind of ways of meeting on a regular basis and communicating with one another. So if it were face-to-face, -face, it'd be different here because it's online it doesn't have the same appeal or, you know, it doesn't add much to what's really going on on a regular basis. But at the same time, you know, we'd like to hear from everyone and what would be useful. So. Okay, I don't see any reactions. Well, you can kind of think about this. Uh, the, I, I will add one more thing on the timing. We thought March might be a good you know, time because it's not too early. So we have time to prepare. And then um, later on, there will be the global forum and we want to have a bit of time between. So we don't want to push it too far down because otherwise it gets closer to the forum. That's it for me. Anything else? Not Do for me. people think that's a good idea?
you guys are not very talkative today. All right, well, we'll leave it at that for now. I guess we have uh, time to spare, but uh, that's great. I'm going to close the call on this, let it think, sink in, and uh, please uh, do let us know what you think. Feel free to post to the mailing list. That's what it's for. Otherwise, we'll talk again next week.